Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do story time. I haven't done story time in a while and I thought I'd do a story time video. Please excuse the hat. My hair is just being a real brat today and I couldn't get it to do anything. So, at any rate. So, today's story is about the time that I tried to kill myself when I was a teenager. I was at a very, very low point in my life, and I just really didn't think I could take any more. I was always being teased, always being mocked, always being bullied, and I just figured I couldn't take it anymore. Um, sadly, lots of kids that are bullied a whole lot resort to um, violence in some way, whether it's against themselves or against someone else or a dog or what have you. So I just had decided I couldn't take my life. My life was just horrible. I didn't want to live it anymore and I was just pretty much done. So, I took something like Tylenol PM, something like that, a whole bottle of it, not just like three or four or something, I took a whole bottle, so it was like 20, 50 pills in one shot, um, and I don't really remember, like, a whole lot that happened after I took the medicine. I remember my stomach hurting within about 15 minutes or so, um, maybe a little shorter time period, maybe more like five minutes or something. I remember I got real, real tired, so um, I went to lay down and um, pretty much when I woke up, I was in a hospital. Um, so now I was told by the doctor that my aunt had found me. Um, I was living with my aunt at the time. So, I had, um, went to sleep and my aunt found me and I was unresponsive. She couldn't wake me up in any way. And from what I was told, she tried lots and lots of different things. She called my name, she shook me, she even moved the bed. So, well, as I said, nothing worked. She couldn't get me to wake up. So she panicked and called an ambulance and they rushed me to the ER, the hospital. And the doctors worked on me. Um, they did pretty much everything they could other than like opening up my chest and like massaging my heart or something like that. They did the little paddles that they zap you with and they did CPR and they just could not get any kind of response. And I was told I didn't have any response when I showed up. I had no pulse, no breathing, no nothing. I was pretty much clinically dead. Um, so, they worked on me, the doctors and all, they worked on me trying to get me to have some sort, um, some sort of life or some signs of life, and I just wasn't doing it. So, they were going to call it. They were going to call me DOA, which is dead on arrival. And I'm sure my aunt is just breaking down at this point. You know, just bawling her eyes out. Um, I did not write a suicide note. Um, I just, I didn't feel like doing it. Uh, so, the doctors called it, and the guy from the morgue came in to put the tag on my toe for identification purposes. You know, I'd already been covered up by, with the sheep by now. So, the guy came in from the morgue to put that tag on my toe to be able to identify me from the other bodies in the morgue. And 
um, some higher power, God, Jesus, Buddha, Diana, whatever you want to call it. I am not going to argue the terms of the higher power. I call it the goddess. You can call it Jesus or God or an angel, whatever you want. So higher power decided you're not done. You're not allowed to die. And all of a sudden, I took this deep breath, and I sat up, and I pulled the sheet down from my head, and I, you know, had sat up, and the guy from the morgue, poor dude, about went through the ceiling. He freaked. I did not know that people could jump that high. I remember thinking, gee whiz, homie can jump. So... Um, he about went through the ceiling, he just jumped real high and was like, holy crap! And he, um, ran out, and I could remember him, he ran out of the room into the hallway. And I remember hearing him yelling, because he was just frantic. He was like, um, I guess the doctor was like right there. And, um, he was hollering, I thought you said she was dead! And I hear, uh softer voice going, she is, and the guy, again, from the morgue, was, well, she just sat up, dead people don't do that, so, everybody rushes back in, and they're taking my vitals, and asking me all kinds of questions, what day is it, who's the president, what's the year, you know, all kinds of neurological, neurological questions that have to do with the brain, and Tell them that your brain is working and that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, um, my vital signs were understandably low, but they were steadily and slowly climbing. So, I mean, it wasn't like I was, um, still in danger or anything. Um, I... They were low, but they were sh slowly and steadily climbing back up. So, um, I remember I was talking to the doctor, and I'm like, why am I here? And the doctor was like, oh, well, your aunt found you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Not that part. I understand that part perfectly. I mean, why am I here, awake and alive and breathing and talking. Why aren't I dead? And the doctor was like, oh, well, that I don't know. All I can say is somebody up there must really love you. And I remember I looked up at the ceiling and I'm like, you know, you could love me a little less. So, um, now, I'm actually very glad that the higher power intervened and did not allow me to end my life at that young age. I was only about 14, 14, 16, somewhere between 14 and 16. So, I'm very, very glad that the higher power had intervened and did not allow me to end my life and kill myself. Now... The reason why I told this story is because there are lots of kids out there that have killed themselves because of being bullied and they just think their life is horrible and there's no way out. Um, I'm living proof that you can survive just about anything. Um, you know, and there are people in places you can go to for help. You can go to your teachers, you can go to your parents, you can go to your friends' parents, you can go to your doctor. There is even a number for the National Suicide Prevention hotline number. I'll leave that number in the description below. Um, so there are lots and lots of places you can go for help. So make sure you use those options. There, <clears throat> I'm sure you don't think about it at the time, but there are people that do care about you. 
your friends, your family. Think how they would feel if you were gone. You know, I mean, um, and especially your parents or your siblings. Think how they're going to feel finding your body. You know, I mean, it's not a very good thing to find somebody that you care about their body lying there dead and you don't know why or you don't understand. Even if you do write a note, that's another thing. You can write it all down. You don't have to write a suicide note per se. You can journal. You can journal it and write down everything that you're feeling. So there are lots of ways to deal with the way that you feel other than harming yourself or harming someone or something else. There are lots of ways that you can get help and I suggest that you do because there really are people that care about you. You may not think so. I know I didn't think so at the time. But there are. There are lots of people that care about you. Your family cares about you. Your friends care about you. Believe it or not, your teachers even care about you. So go to any one of these people. Go to your principal. Go to your teacher. Go to your counselor at school. Go to somebody. Because there are people that care about you and that don't want you to get hurt. And luckily for me, when I tried to take my life and it didn't work, nothing happened. I didn't suffer brain damage or, you know, anything like that. And I'm very, very thankful for that. So a lot of times when people try to commit suicide and they're not able to do it, they end up damaging themselves somehow. They're... Um, they get brain damage, they're, um, what's that word? They're, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, they're immobile in some way, um, they're, they lost a limb, you know, just something. Um, so... There are a lot of ways that that can also backfire on you and make your life a little harder. Um, there's, It's just not worth it. And I'm very, very glad that the higher power stepped in and stopped me from dying. And I wish I had talked to somebody. You know, because maybe somebody could have talked me out of it. But I was home by myself. I'd had a bad day in school. All kinds of kids were saying all kinds of mean stuff. So I just decided I couldn't take it anymore. And I didn't want to live. But luckily for me, higher power stepped in and did not allow me to die. And I'm very, very grateful for that. There are several people in my life that were there back then, that would have just been devastated. They would have really been upset and devastated that I was gone. And there are people that are like that with your life as well. You may not think so. You may not feel it. People don't always show it. They don't always understand, especially parents. Parents don't always understand what you're feeling because you don't tell them. So be sure to go to somebody because there are people that care about you. Well, that's the story. Make sure you subscribe and like. Um, feel free to leave a comment or whatever. And I'll see you next time. Gotta fly.